Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about fragrances that should be more popular than they are. And really, these fragrances for the most part are, are not popular whatsoever. But they should be. They should be. Hey friends, Ash here with Gent Sense. As we work through this, I'm going to tell you why each one of these should be more popular than it is and why I like each one of these. So let's jump into it. Now technically, I'm going to give you guys six fragrances. I know it says five, but we're doing six. I'm going to kick things off with the patchouli fragrance. Now this is patchouli for people that actually like patchouli okay some people will say oh yeah yeah i like patchouli in my fragrance and they're talking about patchouli along with 20 other notes that basically cover the patchouli up or they're talking about patchouli that's you know chocolate basically it smells like chocolate now this isn't the hardcore patchouli but it's definitely the focal point of the fragrance and it's going to be there from when you spray it on until the fragrance goes away it is cashmere patchouli from Hugo Boss. Uh, the notes here are cashmere and patchouli. Yeah, it, it, it's what it says on the front. Now you might be thinking to yourself, I have never heard of cashmere patchouli from Hugo Boss. Like what even is that? And, and what bottle is that? that? That doesn't really look like a Hugo Boss fragrance that I'm aware of. So this is part of the Hugo Boss, the collection, collection. Originally, it was a fragrance line that was based around a note and then a material. So silk and jasmine, for example. There's also velvet and amber and damask oud to some of the other fragrances in this line. This one ultimately is a very wearable patchouli that still maintains patchouli as the absolute dominant force here. So yeah, you get a little bit of that earthiness you get a little bit of that, that deepness, that darkness, but it's softened up by the cashmere. Ultimately, very wearable, very classy, and high-end as well. The presentation of that is fantastic. If we're talking about the full presentation, even comes with a nice little bag that you put the fragrance inside and tie it up and you can take it on the go, I guess. So realistically, will cashmere patchouli ever take off? No, no, it won't. But if you're a fan of patchouli and you can find that at a discounter for a good price, especially if it's the full presentation, you're in for a good time. It's freaking great. Next up, one from Chopard, Black Incense Malaki. What a name. With this presentation, I can never really tell if I think that it looks cheap or it looks nice. It's, it's kind of both. The cap looks pretty fancy. It's got the name of the house on the front. It's gold. It has all these designs on it, but then it's actually kind of light. The top is, is heavy, but then everything that isn't the absolute top of the cap is just plastic. And then the bottle is done in this nice black glass style and just has a cheap sticker thrown on the front with the name of the house and name of the fragrance. So it's this weird kind of melding of cheap and expensive looking. This has resins, leather, incense, smoke, and woods. This one, absolutely a fall and wintertime fragrance, cool weather, evening time. That's, that's when you're gonna reach for this. It's also a good amount of spiciness in here. It's got a little bit of a similarity to Gucci Guilty Absolute, but I would say for a lot of people, probably more wearable. It is still though a powerful fragrance. It's got a big punch, smells fantastic, and the fragrance itself does smell more expensive. So even though there are some crappy looking parts on the bottle, to be frank, the fragrance itself is good. So there's a couple of cool weather ones. Let's go with the warm weather fragrance. Mugler Cologne Fly Away. I have loved this since the first time that I smelled it. Grapefruit and cannabis are the notes in the fragrance. It's really simple. It's basically a rindy fresh grapefruit when you spray it on with kind of a green backing and stays that way for pretty much the whole time it's on your skin. It is amazing for warm weather. I'm actually gonna wear some right now. Now I understand it's a bit divisive. Some people actually don't seem to like this very much. And I get it, it's probably the green feeling that it has because you can pick that up as soon as you spray it on. And like I said, it lingers, but I'm a big fan of green notes and fragrances in general. So with it mixing together with the grapefruit here, I find it just fantastic. It is not the same opening as Light Blue Forever, 
but it has some of those facets. The way that the grapefruit in Light Blue Forever comes across rindy and tart and bitter and sweet all at the same time. This has a bit of that in here. My wife absolutely adores Fly Away. Thinks it's fantastic, her favorite Mugler fragrance right now. Basically, anytime that she can get me to wear this, she does. She'll be like, hey, you should, you should wear this today. This smells really good. So even though I love it and she loves it, and I think it's a perfect warm weather fragrance online, mm, little, little hit or miss. I would think though that it should be more popular than it is because with Light Blue Forever coming out and people really taking and gravitating toward that, especially the opening, I would think the same thing would happen with Fly Away, but it doesn't seem to. Okay, let's go from there to Mr. Burberry Element. Mr. Burberry is a fragrance line that doesn't really get a whole lot of love. That fragrance line just kind of came out and it seemed like it was dead on arrival, really. The first one came out, Mr. Burberry Eau de Toilette. There was a good amount of hype. People actually were excited about the little, little bow tie ribbon thing that the bottle has on. They were like, wow, that looks cool. People were hyped that Francis Kirkshawn was the perfumer. They were thinking, oh man, Francis Kirkshawn is doing a blue fragrance for a mainline designer house. This is gonna be sick. This is gonna be right up there with Blue de Chanel. It's gonna be up there with Dior Sauvage. And then it came out. Eh, yeah, it came out. And people sprayed it on and went. But I liked it for the most part. I mean, for an inexpensive blue fragrance, not too bad. And then flankers came out and flankers came out and people just absolutely didn't care to the point that Burberry Element came out, Mr. Burberry Element, and literally nobody online gave a crap. It's like, it doesn't even exist. I had to go onto the Burberry website and buy it, and uh, they didn't even have 100 mil sizes available, so I had to get a little 50 mil. I, I don't know if they were sold out or if Burberry just said, you know, uh, who cares? I'm just not even gonna bother with that. I don't even think I've seen this pop up at discounters yet. That's how little people care about this. It seems like discount websites aren't even trying to get it in stock, you know? They could pick it up somewhere, I'm sure, but they don't even care to. Now that I've said that, it's gonna be at every discounter before I put this video up. So the fragrance itself, Burberry Element, how does it smell? It does have a little bit of an Invictus style vibe to it. And I have really harped on Invictus style fragrances in the past about how much I hate them. But this one, I actually like. There's ambergris in here, there are mineral notes, there's juniper and randomly green almond. Kind of, kind of out of left field there. It's a very pleasant fragrance. It doesn't go too far onto the sweet side of Invictus style fragrances. Yes, there's a bit of that sweetness, but they rein it in a little, you know? It's not too aggressively in your face and that gives it a nice versatility. Older guys could pull this off, younger guys can pull it off as well. There will absolutely be people that are hardcore fragrance guys that smell it and say, you know what, that's boring and uninspired. Yeah, and I wouldn't argue with that because it's, it's definitely not gonna come across as some inspirational artistic masterpiece. But for being a wearable scent, just super versatile, easy to pull off spring through fall, does that really well. It's the type of scent that I feel like if a lot of people, especially middle-aged and younger, smelled it and were able to pick it up for a pretty good price from a discounter, it would serve them very well for a long time. It is certainly no worse than a lot of other fragrances out there that have gotten a decent amount of hype over the past three, four years. So Burberry Element, if that pops up at discounters, say 30 bucks, 35, 40, something like that, it's worth picking up. And I actually think it's a very solid Invictus style fragrance with a twist. This next one, you can never find a discounters ever. Now I know I said Burberry Element, you can't find it, but it, it's fairly new. This next fragrance, it's been out for a long time and you can really only ever find it, it seems like at the website of the manufacturer. It is Purple Label from Ralph Lauren. It has mahogany, sage, coriander, and blackberry as some of the notes in the scent. And I love, 
love, love Purple Label. The worst thing about it is it's never a discounter, so you're gonna pay full price at the Ralph Lauren website, at least most of the time. You can maybe find it on eBay or something like that for a little bit less, but you know, if it's only five, 10 bucks, just buy it from Ralph Lauren. But outside of that, the worst thing about it, the atomizer. This is just an abomination. Yeah, this is like a, an atomizer you put on fragrances when you hate your customers. Thanks, Ralph Lauren. It just does a really small puff of fragrance, as you see there. It's just, I'm sure it looks worse in person than on camera. Maybe it looks okay on camera, but it's just this little puff. Ugh. And it, it feels bad too when you press it down, like a hairspray bottle from the 80s. But that doesn't really matter. Fragrance is what matters. It gets compared to Bleecker Street from Bond Number no. 9, and there's definitely a similarity there. In case you're wondering, this came first. The big knock on this fragrance, other than the couple things I just talked about, has uh, been the longevity. It's, it's not great, it's not a high performing fragrance, but part of that is probably because the atomizer just completely sucks. So you spray yourself three times, and you're comparing that to a normal atomizer spraying three times, but it's probably more like a spray and a half. I like it, it's great. More people should wear it, more people should have this in their collection. You can wear this spring, you can wear it summer, you can wear it fall, you can wear it winter. If you wear it in winter, spray it on heavier. It's classy, but casual at the same time. You can wear it on a date, you can wear it to the office. Bunch of versatility there. Highly unique, because again, the thing that smells closest to it is Bleecker Street, and Bleecker Street ripped this off. So don't take that as me hating on Bleecker Street either. I love that too. Purple Label. The reason it's probably not as popular as it should be, not at discounters. All right, last one up, this one is at discounters and it's fairly cheap nowadays. I think under $30. So that's a big win for the, for the quality, the smell, the whole package. It's Reflesso from Trissardi. Now the bottle is love it or hate it. I am a fan of it now. Uh, when I first got it in, I wasn't so much of a fan. It's, it's fairly simple. Got the name of the house, name of the fragrance, and then you have these, these ridges. Kind of like a washboard, isn't it? Then the cap just clicks into place. Uh, it looks nice and classy. And the fragrance itself has a similarity to La Nuit de Lone, which is interesting because when you look at the note breakdown, there is no cardamom in here. So you might think to yourself, well, if there's no cardamom, how is it similar to La Nuit de Lone? That doesn't make any sense. There's apple, tonka, leather, and lavender in here. And somehow, with all of those notes swirling and combining together, it does give you a, a bit of a Lana Weed Alone feel. Though, I would say Reflesso is more well suited for daytime wear than Lana Weed Alone is. It's got a good amount of sweetness, but some freshness in there as well. So, you might even be able to think of this as just in a really simplistic kind of way. Lana Weed Alone made better for daytime use, maybe a little bit better for, for warm weather than La Nuit de Lome is and with better projection and longevity. And for the price that it is going for at discounters nowadays, it should be more popular than it is because you're talking about a fragrance that's going to run you roughly half, maybe even a little less than what La Nuit de Lome runs in terms of pricing, but it's gonna give you at least the same amount of versatility, if not more and the same amount of compliment factor. As if that's a, a thing that you can, that you can judge on a, on a scale. Reflesso, cheap, yes. Good, yes. Versatile, yes. Compliment fuller, yes. Washboard bottle, yes. So there we go, six fragrances that should be more popular than they are. Some different reasons behind each one of these, whether it's a slightly divisive opening with a green facet that's gotten it written off from a bunch of people, or because it doesn't really hit discounters, or because it's, it's based around patchouli. Yeah, there's a bunch of different reasons. All right guys, it's gonna do it for me. Let me know in the comments below a fragrance that you wear, that you really enjoy, that you feel like should be more popular than it is for one reason or another. Whether it's just overlooked, it's from a smaller house, maybe it costs a little bit more than people are willing to spend, whatever. As always, guys, thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there. See you tomorrow with another freaking video. See you.